I am thrilled that for the first time since Generation 4, we finally have new evolutions for existing Pokémon again. Not a regional evolution like Alolan Executor, or an evolution to a regional form like Obstagoon, but new evolutions, brand new evolutions, for the known forms of known Pokémon. That is really cool, and I hope it doesn't take us another four generations to get more of those. New evolutions, regional forms, and unique evolutions for regional forms are all awesome ways to iterate on some of the more outdated Pokémon designs and to expand on established families. Pokémon Legends Arceus is the first time we get all three of those in the same game, and I want to give it credit for that, but... I don't know if it's because the concept isn't new anymore, so the ideas don't feel as exciting, or if it's because they were designing regional forms for the past of an already established region that might have added some challenge to it. But the fact is that while I like most of the new Pokémon and new forms, the vast majority of them have some elements that make me less excited about them. For example, I think Hisuian Growlithe is a ripoff of the new 151 Growlithe. Ken Sugimori himself clearly saw our work and stole it. <laughs> Thanks! <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty uncanny, but Ness and I agree that the coincidence is very cool. I really like Hisuian Growlithe, and Hisuian Arcanine is awesome too, but I really don't like the middle gray of its fur. Like, it doesn't have enough contrast with the red-orange of the body. If we desaturate the art, we can see that the gray and orange have almost exactly the same value or brightness. A blacker or whiter gray would have made a huge difference and looked perfect. That probably seems like kind of a small nitpick, and it sort of is, but it keeps me from enjoying the design as much as I otherwise would have. And almost all of them have something like that, although it's not always directly in the design. I really like the new Avalog. I think the tusks and the new variation in color add a lot to the design, but even Alpha Avalog are disappointingly small after the awe-inspiring Lord Avalog. Sligu is great. I think the shell works really nicely in this design. It looks like something that Sligu could actually fit into, and it, the way it uses the shell as a sort of wheel is really creative. When it evolves into Gudra, I think the legs are a little too small for such a hefty Pokémon, but I still really like it, especially with the way that the tail turns into the shell. The legs are the kind of nitpick that I could very easily get past if there wasn't something else that bothered me more, like the fact that the tail doesn't actually turn into the shell. Gudra doesn't look like it could retreat into its shell, but somehow it can, and it looks really awkward. You can even tell by the animation that they didn't bother to figure out how Gudra retreats into its shell. Ursa Luna and Weirdeer are both awesome additions to their families. I've always liked Teddy Ursa and Ursa Ring as designs, even though they are a bit simple even for Generation 2, and they lacked something to really make them shine. Stantler does kind of have that something special as a normal type that gets access to a lot of psychic moves, but it's still a normal type that doesn't evolve, and a pretty uninspired one at that. Ursa Luna and Weirdeer Fix them both. The Ted Ursa line gets a new type, and we get a new awesome quadruped brown bear Pokemon to ride around on, plus the clouded moon design to the face is really neat. And Stantler evolves and gains the actual psychic type, and Weirdeer looks elegant and regal. But both of them have such frustratingly convoluted evolution methods, come on! Why couldn't have Ursa Luna required only the peat block? Or only the full moon? I like that it needs the full moon. And why couldn't Weirdeer have required only knowing Psy Shield Bash like Ancient Power for Mamoswine? Or even using Agile Style Psy Shield Bash once, but 20 times? You gotta be really dedicated to Stantler to get that evolution without knowing what you're doing. And the starters! I think it's awesome that they get new forms and new types, and the set offers really good variety too. But as much as I like Hisuian, Samurott, and Typhlosion, Decidueye doesn't quite do it for me, probably because I love the original so much, I find it disappointing that they don't change more. Decidueye is probably the one that changes the most, funnily enough. But I feel like their starters would have been a great opportunity to make really surprising forms. Like, if Darmanitan can look this different, you can change Samurott more than this. Some new designs just don't do much for me. Lilligant is cool, but I prefer the original by a lot. Braviary, I do like the new one much better than the original, but I still don't find it a particularly standout design. Lying around on it was awesome, though. 
Voltorb and Quillfish I really like, but then they evolve and get kind of ruined for me. Voltorb is really simple as it always has been, but the wood grain helps it blend in better with this ancient environment, and the thick eyebrows give it this carved look that gives it a really distinctive face. When it evolves, it gets the exaggerated angry eyes that in theory I like, but without thick eyebrows or the white sclera on the eye, the face gets completely lost. Quillfish is a Pokemon that I always thought was just shy of being really cool, and I thought the Hisuian version was gonna be it. The new color scheme is awesome, the new type combo makes it one of the few fish Pokemon that isn't a water type, and the fact that it evolves, but then it evolves, and Overquill is just Quillfish, but Overkill. The name is absolutely brilliant and perfectly fitting, but I find the particular exaggerations that they chose completely unflattering. Cleavor is not a Pokemon that appeals to me personally, but the idea and the execution are perfect. Scyther is a Pokemon all about slashing and cutting, so a stone axe themed evolution is really fitting for this setting. It's an evolution that makes a lot more sense than Scizor, keeping the cutting implements instead of turning them into pincers. I just like Scizor's sleek sports car look better. Sneasel, and especially Sneasler, are Pokemon that I'm told a lot of people dislike, but I think they're great, except for one thing, their type. Ice Poison would have been a more interesting type combo than Fighting Poison, but other than that, I think they're both really good. This was my first introduction to Sneasel in Pokemon Silver. A tiny black cat looking thing with giant claws and a feather for an ear, and I loved it. In Pokemon Crystal, they gave it a new color scheme, which is even better. But when they introduced Weavile, something never quite felt right. I like Weavile, but I think the full crest detracted from the asymmetrical single feather that I liked so much. To me, Hisui and Sneasel is a wonderful modernization of the original design if you account for the type change. The patterns on the face, claws, and neck work really well to make the design more detailed without making it too complex. And Sneasler does a better job than Weavile did of keeping the Sneasel elements that I liked. The single long feather is excellent, the giant claws are excellent, the Plumeria vibe is excellent. It develops Sneasel in the right ways to enhance the elements that I, at least, loved about Sneasel in the beginning. I just wish I didn't hate the little eyes in the basket when riding on it. It's kind of ridiculous. Felt a little Tintin. It did feel a little Tintin, yeah! <laughs> Sneaking and hiding in a... In a basket. In a basket, in a cartoon, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, there are two families of new designs that I have no reservations about. Basculin and Basculegion, and Zerua and Zoroark. The flowing shredded fur, the bloody red, the wild mess of hair, Zerua's look of despair, and Zoroark's killer stare of malice. Perfect. If it's your criteria. Cute. Cool and mysterious. Yeah. Congratulations, Pokemon. You made a good Pokemon. <laughs> okay, it does kind of suck that Zerua and Zoroark, such prominent reveals in the pre-release promotional run, only appear so late in the game. But Basculin and Basculegion? No notes. They made Basculin interesting, of all things. I think removing the underbite was a great call, and I love the contrast of the white stripes against the black. And then Basculegion adds so much awesome lore and design to it. It's a gendered design, but not in an obvious way. The, the male has facial hair and the female has a white powdered face or something, but it's only clear that they're gendered when you know. And they add a salmon angle to the family too, with the males getting a bright pink pattern that the females don't get. And the Legion of Spirits, since salmon swim upstream to breed, many of them don't make it, and often they die shortly after they spawn. Supported by the spirits of their fallen comrades, a Seven Nation army couldn't hold them back. Basculegion is definitely my favorite Hisuian Pokemon, followed closely by Zoroark. I guess you could count Origin, Dialga, and Palkia, and definitely Enamorous as Hisuian Pokemon too. I actually really like Origin Palkia. I think its combination of horse-like and humanoid features does a fantastic job at making it actually look like a legendary Pokemon, like a creature of legend from a time before time, while still keeping it grounded. 
It's got a bit of warrior in the helmet-like face design, a bit of centaur, a bit of pegasus, which makes it surprisingly Greek for a region based on Japan, but it's perfectly fitting with the architecture of Mount Coronet. Dialga doesn't do any of that. I don't like it at all. It's kind of funny how my preferences for the two of them swap in origin form. Looks like it'll poke itself in the eye of bending down to drink. <laughs> Dialga, I think, looks more alien than mythical. It looks almost mechanical. It loses so much of its natural animalistic traits. That diamond cannon on its chest neck thing, that's just awful. But what I think is really weird about the origin forms is that Arceus didn't get one. Arceus absolutely deserves a redesign, like an official one, not just the one that I did. As for Enamorous... Let's save that for its own video. It'll be out on Monday. For now, let me know in the comments what you thought of the new Hisuian Pokemon. Which one was your favorite? Thank you to all of the Libros who support my work through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships, especially luxury patron Ethan from Chicago. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next chapter.